What is going on and welcome back to the channel. So as you can obviously see, we are not in our normal garage today. So in like the background of things, aside from the EG33, aside from the other ST, the 05 STI Karma, um, I've been working up here at the mod garage, kind of like uh, doing side jobs here and there. So right now we are doing an engine build on that 07 STI that is up on the alignment rack, or alignment rack, the lift. Now, I don't quite know what the main cause of failure was with this engine. Um, I did see a lot of bearing material in it when I pulled the heads off, the oil pan off. I did find a lot of it like floating around the engine. So today, well, I already did all the disassembly. You guys have seen me do a ton of disassembly stuff on these engines, but today we're gonna be doing like a quick rebuild. My goal for this car is to at least get the long block built today, get it in the car, get accessories on it. If we have time, get it started and running. But let me give you a rundown of what we got going on right now and what is next. So like I said, this is the short block that I pulled out of the car. It is a little grimy and gross. It seemed to be leaking oil from a lot of places on this thing. Uh, so we're gonna be completely replacing this assembly with an IAG one that we have over here. This is. I believe a stage three tough closed deck half inch head studs right now the owner is not planning on doing any big power at the moment but he does have future plans later on so normally i don't do engine builds for for people but with the eg33 just being such a money pit right now um, doing side jobs like this definitely helps so i just went to the machine shop just picked up the heads for this car because they obviously needed to be remachined cleaned up uh, we had these pressure checks as well and hot tank just to get a lot of the grease grime schmoo off of there now before i go bolting these onto that new short block down there i want to get both of these heads ready so right here we have a brand new oem subaru gasket kit i will link this down below for anyone who is doing a rebuild and just needs all new gaskets for everything in the car so we've got uh, valve seals crush washers uh, air pump seals front main seal rear main seal all that stuff is in that kit right now so what i'm going to be doing with this to start off with is valve seals on the intake and exhaust side on both of these um, after that's done we're going to pull that guy off of the short block or off of the engine stand, get it set aside. Um, then we're gonna get our new IAG one on here, start assembling that one, hopefully get it done today and get it back in this thing. So let's start on some heads. So the worst of doing the rebuild, in my opinion, is done, and that's replacing valve seals and replacing the valve keepers. So brand new valve keepers, brand new valve seals. It's always a fight with these. Now, I greatly appreciate Ryan for letting me use his tools over here, but every single one of his tools is magnetized. So it was like doing valve keepers on difficulty, like extreme. So even with putting a little bit of assembly lube and engine oil on those valve keepers, they just kept magnetizing to the tools I was using to get them in place. But they're all done now, so these are ready to go and be bolted onto the new short block. Now with this short block, uh, I need to get this thing off of the engine stand. Uh, what are you doing with this? What do we do with these? destroy it. So I'm going to set this on fire. Um, now I got to pull off the oil cooler on this guy. Once the oil cooler's off, we can go ahead and get this guy off the stand. I'll just carry it. It's not that heavy. I think these are about 70 pounds. Um, we'll go set it in the corner. We'll set it on fire and then we'll open up that new IAG box. I've never opened a brand new motor before out of an IAG box. So I'm a little excited. It's not even my engine, but I'm still excited for this. So let me tear this thing apart real quick, pull it off the stand and then we'll, I guess we'll do an impromptu unboxing of a closed deck IAG block. So old engine is off the stand. It's ready for the new engine. Uh, we've got it in this IAG box here. I've never opened one of these before. It says inspect damage before accepting. I don't think that's been done because this is still zip tied and stapled shut, but get this thing open, but before we get it open, a quick message from today's sponsor. So I wanna give a shout out to today's video sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning based platform that allows you to go in and build upon skills that you already have or ones that you wanna learn on. Personally, I love Skillshare because it's so easy to navigate their platform. It's so easy to find classes that you're trying to build upon and grow and all the information is broken down into subcategories. Personally, I love this class by Randy Allen. This is just videography for beginners. If I would have had something like this when I first started making YouTube videos, the video quality would have been so much better and it would have been so much easier to streamline and figure out how to edit. Now, Skillshare is relatively affordable as well if you are looking to build upon those skills that you already have or wanting to learn new ones at only $10 a month. Plus, if you want it, just give it a free try. Go ahead, hit that link down in the description below. The first thousand people that use that link will get a free trial to their 
platform. Now let's get back to building this engine. All right, let's get this guy opened up here. I'm awful at opening boxes. That half was a lot easier. Open that, open that. Wow, it's a lot of foam. Wow, dude, that's like hard foam too. Is it in a box? Is it in a box, in a box, in a box? What is this? Oh no, it's just a cover. Wow, that thing's shiny. EJs are so small. I've been playing with the big six cylinder for so long now that- This looks like a baby. It does look like a baby. I think this engine is pretty overkill for what he's doing. Yeah. But it's not a bad thing to go overkill sometimes, I guess. Let's cut it open. It's got fire rings or fire locks. What do they call them? It's the copper wire that goes around the uh, the cylinder. This thing's nuts, dude. Wow. What comes in this little bag right here? We got the dowels. Easy. Hmm. Notice, short block, long block installation document. I don't need that. So before we even get this thing on a stand, I oh, I like how I put the studs right there for that. That's kind of neat. We got to get these access panels on the back covered up. Now, the owner of this engine did buy the additional kit and we need to get this rear main seal in. Uh, luckily, we have tools to be able to do all of that. Once all the plugs are in and we get it on a stand, I can actually rotate it and show you guys. Uh, but as much as I love muscling this thing all over the bench, uh, let me just, let me assemble this and then I'll get on the stand and show you guys everything that you have to do when you first get one of these IAG blocks. So before this engine actually goes on a stand, what you gotta do is there's a small O-ring for this access panel. Get the O-ring in there, get the access panel on, put the two Phillips head screws down. This side, you need to put a small layer of sealant. You can kind of see it right there. Uh, this is Toyota sealant. It's just what they, it's what Ryan uses up here in the mod garage. Um, the, oh, geez, that's gonna bother me now. So we have our access panel on, it's all sealed up. Our access plug is torqued down behind that. We have our rear main seal installed. Now at this point, we can go ahead and get the engine stand bolted back up to this. Um, and then Brian and I over here are going to manhandle this engine onto the stand over there and then we can start assembling it. So I wanna get the heads on here, the half inch head studs. This still like, I've never seen an engine in person that actually has these fire lock rings. They're actually pretty interesting. Once I actually get this on the stand, I'll show you guys a little bit more on them and kinda go over why you might want them and how they work. But uh, let's get the, let's just, let's just get it on the stand. I'm just gonna like, on the stand. So we've got the engine on a stand now. So these ones have fire lock rings. If you don't know what that is, it's a thin piece of copper that is essentially, they, they mill the block out so that way they can put that thin piece of copper in there. Now, when you go to put the head on and you torque everything down with the head gasket, it squishes that copper down and it makes a better sealing surface to reduce the chances of head gasket failure issues when you're running high boost applications. So now that the engine is actually on here, I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna get the heads bolted on here first. Once the heads are on, we're gonna do oil pump, water pump, timing, flip it over, do oil pan, oil cooler, all of that stuff. I wanna complete this long block today. So I wanna minimize how many parts are actually sitting around the shop right now, just so that way I'm not spread out like super thin, not knowing where anything is. So let's do this. We got half inch head studs to put in here. We'll get them all torqued down. We'll get these mating surfaces cleaned off and uh, make this a long block. So I had a feeling this was gonna be a problem. So when I first talked to Ryan, when Ryan and I first talked about doing this engine build, um, I was like, hey, the block's already machined out for half inch head studs. Are we going to machine the heads also? He told me that, hey, he's pretty sure that they'll clear. Um, they definitely don't. So these heads need to go back to the machine shop. Uh, I could drill these up, but I'm not going to drill someone else's heads up to half inch. I just don't feel comfortable doing that. Um, I can get the head studs on the block at least. So that way when the time comes, I can just slide the heads over them, but that's frustrating. So since uh, I can't actually get the heads on here, what's next is the oil pan. So we're using an IAG oil pan on this. I've personally never used an IAG pan before. Um, so we're gonna get the oil pan on. We're gonna get the head studs at least into the short block. Uh, we'll get the oil cooler on. We'll get the oil pump on and the water pump. So we'll get as far as we actually can today. Um, just kind of sucks about this whole half inch head stud thing. So hopefully the machine shop isn't gonna be too along with those. So 
even though we can't get the long block fully assembled for this STI today, um, the short block is coming along nicely. The last thing that I'm gonna be doing today is the oil pan. Now, I've never used the IAG oil pan before. Normally, I'm, I'm more of a killer, killer bee kind of guy uh, than an IAG oil pan kind of guy, but it is a pretty good looking oil pan. But let me show you guys what the IAG oil pan actually comes with. Let me show you the progress on that short block right there. That thing's gonna be able to hold a ton of power, that short block. Um, the heads are 100% factory stock heads at this point. Um, so, I mean, those are pretty easy to assemble. They have to go back to the machine shop to get up drilled for half inch head studs. I knew it, but let me show you this oil pan. So, like I said, normally I use Killer B. This thing has a ton of internal baffling on it, which I actually kind of like. On the bottom of it, the drain is right on the bottom, which is kind of cool. It's got these like nice cooling fins. And then uh, obviously the spot where the dipstick goes in, I'm gonna leave the dipstick out for now. Now, this is what I thought was interesting is that this uses a rubber gasket. Now I'm gonna be using the rubber gasket and then I'm also gonna put a small layer of RTV adhesive on top of it, just to make sure that this thing has a solid sealing surface. The oil pickup itself is actually a pretty good oil pickup as well. I actually kind of like it uh, design wise. I mean, you're never gonna see it. Uh, the baffle or the windage tray looks exactly like Killer Bees does. Comes with all the hardware, everything you need, the spacers, all the good stuff right there. So uh, let's get this guy installed. We'll get the seal in here. We'll put a nice like seal on top of that. Get it stuck up to the bottom of the engine there. And then the oil pan will pretty much be done. I think that's about the extent of what we can do today. Over here, I've gotten the coolant crossover tube put back on. New PC, I have new PCV breather lines for this entire engine. So we have new line there. Uh, knock sensors put back in. We have all the timing components put on here for now, just so that way I'm not having to scavenge for parts later um, and bolts to try to find them. A well, harmonic balancer is on something that I didn't know that is good to know. That is if you are swapping from one short block to another, see look, I learn stuff every day. You got to knock out the keyway that goes in the crankshaft and transfer it over to the new one. I, oh, that whole box moved. So, I mean, kind of interesting. I didn't know that because when I first put that crank sprocket on there, I was like, uh, that's a problem. But ended up, honestly, you just pop out the keyway, put the new one in there. So, uh, oh, and I got the oil cooler back on. So let's flip this thing over. Let's get this oil pan sealed up, get it thrown on this short block. And then hopefully, uh, hopefully our heads will come back here soon for this thing. So that way I can wrap up this STI. Uh, and get it out of out of the mod garage shop, and then we can order more car parts. So at this point, I've gotten as far as I can with that engine. We've got all the timing pulleys on, oil pan is on, head studs are in, coolant passenger on, all gaskets replaced, motor mounts on. Uh, keyway replaced, crank sprocket on, it is ready to go. So as soon as this head situation gets taken care of, we can get the heads back here, we can get the heads bolted up to this guy, get it dropped in the car, get it running. Um, I assume the next time I come up here to work on this, whenever that's going to be, whenever this machine shop actually finishes um, dr up drilling these heads, I should have this running in a day. I'm guessing it's not gonna take much longer. Actually, I take that back, maybe a couple hours. See, heads go on, cams go in, drop it in, I guess five hours, five hours from where we are now to have a, having a running car. So uh, I think that's all I got going on up here right now. It's time to swim back down to the house. I got a live stream and I got to close out with you guys because I do have some updates and some surprises. Well, it's not really a surprise. I have some answers to some questions you guys have been asking me. Back down at the garage, traffic was awful as always whenever I come back down from the mod garage. But um, that engine build, I did not get nearly as far as I wanted to today, but it is not the end of the world. Um, those heads are gonna go back to the machine shop. They're going to get up drilled for half inch head studs. I could have done it myself on the drill press here, um, but I just, like I said, I don't feel comfortable drilling someone else's heads up. Um, if they were my heads, I would totally, totally drill them up to half inch on the on the drill press, but someone else's, I'm just not gonna do. I'll leave that to, prof to the professionals. So uh, the short block. Pretty much assembled at this point. That IAG block looks absolutely beautiful. I have never seen a stage four tough with fire rings in person before. I've only ever seen photos of it and they're absolutely beautiful. But a lot of you guys always ask me, how do I pay for the builds like this, the 05 STI? And it's doing a lot of side jobs like that. Um, some of you guys in the past have asked me if I would take on like building your guys' engines for a rebuild and stuff like that. I talked with Brian today up at the Mod Garage and he is open to the idea um, of allowing me to do your guys' rebuilds if you guys do want me to do them. I know some of you guys have asked me or installs also up there at the mod garage. So, I mean, if that is something that some of you guys are still interested in by 100%, I'm totally open to doing doing it now that I have space in an area that I, that I can actually 
working. Sorry, I just got off the live stream, so I'm like talking all over the place right now. But anyways, I'm pumped for this week. The ECU gets dropped off for this on Friday, today, the day you guys are seeing this. So I'm, I can't wait. I cannot wait to get the Hall Tech wired in here. I don't know how to do it, but like with everything else, we will figure it out. We will learn and we will find a way to make it happen. But that's all I got for you guys on this one. I will do a follow-up video on that short block and long block, getting it back in the car. The next video that we do on that one, it's probably gonna be like a week or two out because those heads have to go back to the machine shop. Um, but I'm curious to see. I'm just curious. I'm curious. I want to know. Plus, I want to keep you guys updated on that one because it's a fun side project. But anyways, uh, if you guys like the video, you know what to do. Go ahead and hit that like button. Turn it black, blue, green, purple, silver, cyan, whatever color it turns for you. Color of the day is goldenrod today. And if you're not already subscribed to the channel, hit your boy up because there's always going to be from. I, I, if you guys want me to start recording more random engine builds that I do on the side, feel free to let me know. Like I'm totally down to. Um, but if you guys want more of that, let me know, know down in the comments below. And with that, I will catch you guys in the next one. Peace out, homies. Woo!